Hey, hey, Easy Jeezy here. How's it going? Hope your uh, day is going good. Mine's been pretty busy. This is uh, about the fifth roll through this, uh, this section of the video. And this will be segment seven. The object of this video is not really to solve problems yet, but to complete getting that light to burn brightly and to understanding the operation of the transmission. Then we'll start working into problems that don't allow it to operate correctly. So let's get started and we'll do a close up here and try to get some lights to come on. And uh, I think I think some folks are trying to are finally starting to get it here. So uh, I want to keep going while it's still fresh and uh, hopefully it gives me some room to work here and give you guys some stuff too. I thought I'd tease you with that Jeanberg shifter over there. <laughs> but uh, okay, here, uh, here we go. Now, <clears throat> this is the pinion shaft. This is the shaft that goes to the wheels. It's the lower shaft. It's in the neutral position right now, which is in the top photo, and the engine would be running, and that means that this top shaft is going to be turning for sure. And this is first gear. It is it is made with this shaft. This is one piece. It's not separate gears that can be taken on and off. This is very expensive. It's it's all machined together. It's like a $500 item if you go with the performance separate setup. But this is turning right now. And you say to yourself, okay, here it shows in the picture. It's turning. And sure enough, it's turning. It's spinning freely. The reason it's spinning freely is because it requires this slider hub or clutch hub. There's a, a few different slang names gave to it. Uh, I think different companies have their own terminology for it, but we're going to call it the clutch hub or the slider hub because it slides back and forth. Okay? Now, this hub is solid. It's not solid. You can see that it's rocking, but the shaft that it's attached to is solid. So let's look at the pieces here as they go together. You've got your shaft, you've got a bearing surface, you've got a set of bearings in a cage, needle bearings, that keeps it solid from rocking around and moving, a nice tight fit. This is your synchronizer hub. It is not like third and fourth, this is part of first and second gear. It's made right on there and it's it's solid. Not welded, it's solid. The next thing is this brass. This is the synchronizer ring. It acts like a brake. It this is this part of the of the uh, hub is tapered and so is the inside of the synchro ring. It's the synchro ring that's brass, that's soft, that can stretch, and they can wear out, and that's what causes crunching when you're putting it into gear. You have the same thing on second, third, and fourth. Now, first gear you generally don't use too much until you come to a complete stop. You got if you're jamming it in there, if traffic slows down, and before you get your car stopped, the light turns green, and the guy in front of you takes off, and the guy behind right on your hind end, you know, you have a tendency to start jamming and force it and push it. It doesn't want to go into first gear. And what you're doing is you're putting a lot of pressure on this and a lot of pressure on this other hub and you're you're putting some wear on there that you really don't want. It's best just to say the heck with the guy behind you, come to a dead stop and put it in. Or double clutch it or whatever you want to do. But just forcing things is what causes wear. Okay, the next thing is this piece right here. This is what takes all the stress. This is what really connects this shaft to this gear 
through these teeth on the side, these dogs on the side. So this goes on here, and now you say, okay, it's next to it, but this one still turns. How do you get this one to lock up with this one so that both shafts turn? And that's the job of this slider ring. It fits over the top, like so. <laughs> it does when the R button isn't pushed. <laughs> Honest. Okay. There are detents inside here that keep it in this neutral position where it's not touching or rubbing. It's not until you apply pressure with the shifter and the shift fork sits in here actually it sits underneath there like so and when you push on the shifter it pushes this up against the side of the gear these teeth the brass ones help these big teeth on the outside line up with these teeth on the inside this is what's take this is incredible this piece of metal being at that is in a circle the only way it's not going to grip is if it explodes this is like kryptonite this is unobtainium this is some hard ass stuff and it's not going to go anyplace it's going to take that energy you'll break a tooth off before this explodes this is just some incredible engineering and why it was copied so much now I really can't tell you the truth if they invented it or who invented this design but a lot of different companies use this same principle if you learn this principle and this theory about the synchro hub and the way this slows it down the brass part acts as a brake and gets this to mesh with this part and then your power is transmitted completely through that's that's all there is to it simple as can be you can see it right here in this uh, setup here that's the neutral position and the rest of the shaft can turn independent until this is shoved over we've done this before let me just try to try to get it to go here okay now this one you can see the little bit of the edge of the gear here and the edge of the gear here this is this is a complete running tranny this is the one that we took it out of the car just the way we took it out so all the pieces are there there's your little brass ring if we move it back the other way <laughs> burn myself with this thing here now there's second gear we move it back far enough to hit second gear now you can see this the brass synchro ring it's loose on here it won't rotate but it is loose okay I hope you got that we're gonna keep this uh, video shorter and uh, hopefully that's gonna make the light shine brighter so that you know how that power is submitted and how the clutch hubs move back and forth you got with that same clutch hub here it is between first and second and the top one goes between third and fourth it works the same all right there you go I hope you enjoyed that and uh, we'll keep going thanks for watching thanks for subbing easy jeezy out